Casio G-Shock. Tabletop review. Nothing fancy. Project. I call these WRVs. Thanks for joining me. If you are new, found me through Google or a search in YouTube. Subscribe. Follow if you are into dude stuff. Guns, knives, and now a few watch reviews. Not too many. And surprisingly, I don't only like Casio G-Shocks. Evidence sitting in the back. There's two Seikos. Uh, there might be a smartwatch peak in there, Edifice. And then we have a Mudmaster sitting there in the lower right. Let's get to it. By the way, I'm going to introduce in this tabletop review of this Casio Rangeman. Here's the model number. Always do this now. GW9400. There's a couple characters after that. 3.4 ounces, $185 in Amazon. Master of G Rangeman. Talk about the details. And what I'm going to introduce right now is this. To understand the watches. Dude watches. you got to have an understanding between what I call, now in this video, shorthanding it, 1C, 2C. You guys know what that means? First, cool. Second, cool. Look at the video at the top. It explains all about it. Surprising features of watches that I love. My surprising list, at least. First, cool is functionality. Second, cool, or 2C, introduced in this video. It's just, it just turns you on. You like it. It's cool. It's cool for you, personally. You dig it. And man, there are a ton of watches. You can find whatever you want, whatever your taste is, you can find it. Subscribe to my Twitter feed at the top if you don't already. I will ask the question, eventually, in what video did I introduce the abbreviation 1C and 2C? This is it. The Casio Rangeman 9400 is the answer. You may win something, a knife, maybe a gun, maybe a watch. That'd be a cool giveaway, right? A watch would be. Let's get to it. I want to try to make this shorter. This is an ABC watch, altimeter, barometer, compass. I'll try to rip through it. And I have at this point done several Casio reviews. And I've only at this point posted like two because the audience is not digesting them fast enough, both my subscribers and the internet as a whole. Philosophy of use for this watch is as follows. Shooting guys will like it because of the name. Hey, a name's important. It attracts people. You go, hey man, that's a cool name. Range man, I'm a shooter. And guys will wear it. Maybe they're a tactical instructor. Maybe they're in law enforcement, military. They'll just love the fact that it has the name Range Man. And also it has some really nifty features in it for sure. But I think the name is well done. And it will attract shooters, tactical types, military, law enforcement. I think it's also a great outdoor watch. It has the same functionality as we will see as the Pro Trek. In a different display different uh, presentation a different look and you kind of got to be good with the Casio G-Shock look right uh, I have fluorescent lighting though and I you'll see me tilt it like that that'll keep the flicker down so right there it flickers right about there it doesn't so it's just a timing of the fluorescent lights uh, I like a Casio G look uh, the G-Shocks like the big chunky look I've liked it more and more if you were to talk to me about 10 years ago, I probably would not have liked it that much because I like slim and trim. That's why, I, well, at least for one reason, my watch collection sucked so bad. It was data banks, like ultra economy Casios and Timexes, and I just ran with that for free 30 years. I've changed. I've improved. I like it. Like you saw at the back, it's only 3.4 ounces, so that's pretty lightweight. The Casio Range Man Master of G. And I will talk about just a couple competitive options. There's one peeking out there right here. Price may be more expensive depending on what you want. I'll leave philosophy of use there. It is a cool looking watch, uh, but you know, I it, it's in the eye of the beholder because some people uh, they may say, well, that's just not my cup of tea. I get it. Totally cool. Couple colorations. Actually, there's been multiple colorations of this, and I'm not the Casio Range Man expert, but I, there's been JDM versions of this. Um, red, yellow. Currently, Casio's making a US black version, and believe it or not, that's what I bought this in. And I'll tell you right now and show you right now, this is the original bezel. I got it labeled and everything that this watch came in. How cool is this? 
came in black, ordered off Amazon for $185. I'll roll in a screenshot. Totally worth it, by the way, for that price, for what you're getting. Totally worth it. And the 24 millimeter screw in band. And then I went out in eBay and found this OD case, which I thought was super sick. And I bought this off eBay. So I changed the coloration. And here's some photos of when I did that process. Pretty easy, actually. Uh, I was surprised how easy it was to peel off the bezel cover on the Casio Rangeman, to take the bands off, and to do a complete coloration swap out. I actually did have a super cool yellow band that I bought, but I couldn't justify its cost, so I took it back. It was an eBay purchase, and it was a JDM band. And I think like the yellow Casio Rangeman is super collectible. I see it in eBay for like $1,300. Yeah, I've said that in other videos, that Casios can go way up in value. It's all just, uh, like anything, supply and demand. If there's a lot of them, little demand, they'll be cheap. There's few of them, lots of demand, it's going to be super expensive. And I think the yellow one was a special edition Japanese domestic market one. There may have been some red, I, I don't really know. It would have looked super cool, but I have another yellow watch that I'm happy with. And so this OD went does it for me. And that, by the way, is kind of another philosophy of use I didn't really cover, and that is collectability. If you don't believe me, I said this in another video, guys may, that don't know Casio G-Shocks specifically, and we will consider other brands later, perhaps, but you know, click around the internet and just look at people's collections. There's guys that have a thousand Casio Gs. I'm not exaggerating. They do. They, it turns them on, and that's their 2C, man. They just dig it. And they trade them. They're commodities. You know, they'll wheel and deal on the forums. Say, hey, I got this one, Japanese limited edition. And they'll trade, you know, maybe five watches for one if it's a rare watch. I think that's cool. Like, guys do it with knives. They do it with stamps, which I think is a dumb hobby. Hope you don't do it. But if you do, uh, it's, it looks good on you. <laughs> I like stuff I can use, man. Knives, guns, watches. Those are stuff that have, to me, a, a more, much more interesting applic application. Speaking of colorations of the Casio Rangeman Master of G, there is an OD one with a negative display. But I generally don't, I want to show you a ProTrek before the video ends. I'm generally not a fan of negative LCD displays. I just think they're super hard to read unless they're done right, which is basically gold lettering for my eyes. With your younger eyes, maybe it'll do great, but I don't know. That That's a cool watch, but it's basically this, but it has a negative display. So if someone's looking at this and they know a Casio Rangeman, they'd have to be like really in the know. They go, that's a different version because it did not come in positive LCD, LCD display. And I'd give them a couple cool points for that. So there are some variations. You can customize it. We talked about it. Let's talk about the size, lug width, weight, comfort, sweat factor, strap retention. I'm going to start off with sweat factor. Anytime you get a big hunk of watch sitting on your wrist, uh, there's going to be a sweat patch created if you're like me. Uh, I get it with most watches, and so all I do is I just take it off once in a while and dry it out, put it back on, I just deal with it. It's no different with a, this. I would say the sweat factor, therefore, is pretty high when it's hot. When it's cold, don't worry about it. Uh, let's look at the strap real quick. Again, I did say the lug width, 24 millimeters, and you can find other lugs to, I'm sorry, other bands to put on here. Nothing like an OEM, OEM band, though, if you ask me. Looks best. This is a resin band, I believe and I think it will last well. Double clasp stainless steel. I think the retention is, uh, I would rate it medium to low in that the stainless steel clasp, or keeper I should say, is kind of like the Casio Golf Master where I had to put helicopter tape under there to create more pressure on that. It just will pop out and there's really no barb. There's a minor barb here. Maybe I'll give it medium. The Golf Master, if I remember right, doesn't have a barb on it at all. We'll look at the case. I'm not going to peel off the sticker because it reminds me it's just a hassle. Put it back on. Nice looking case, though. So you can see the four screws there. No, uh, what I call wings or stabilizers on this one, which is kind of surprising. I would think the Range Man should have it because it is a big watch. Uh, it's not huge, it's about the size of a very high value and also excellent Armatron. I like Armatrons as well, I think they're cool for the money. Comfort, I think, is pretty excellent just because it is relatively light for what it is. 3.4 ounces, like you can see. With a Casio G-Shock 
protection system well in place. Let's talk about the feature set. Man, I better get going. I got to rip. I'm 10 minutes. I already talked about the feature. Sorry. Doing the best I can. Okay, real quick. We're going to start low left. This is upper left. Upper right, middle right, lower right. That's how I call them. First up, the loom. Let's take a look at that. And I do think I have it set on auto. I've been finding that some of these things just are not these auto things are kind of temperamental. So there's your loom. I do have it set to three seconds. Nice loom, nice back lighting on the Casio Rangeman. Nothing new though. A lot of watches are that way. Great illumination. And that's this button I was pressing. And to turn on auto light, you'd press and hold this and it's indicated. Maybe it turned itself off. I'm looking. Yeah, it probably did. I had it turned off. It should have an LT there in the lower right and it's not there. Okay, this lower right will sequence through the settings. So there's world time. It is a dual scroll world, uh, world time, which I super like. So we're in LA time right now. I can go back. I can go forward. Some of the Casio modules, and by the way, this is module 340, are just one way. I've talked about that a lot. Daylight savings time on this. I think you press and hold this, and you'll turn it off and on. It's not an auto daylight savings time, which on some of the modules it has. I super prefer that because then I don't have to mess around with it and forget it. You can see power save is turned on. It's a PM. I have a 24 hour display if I want. I have local or home time repeated right here. And this dial graph has multi functions. I think right now it's. Yeah, I'm not sure actually. Stopwatch right here. Start, stop. I think this clears it. That does. Okay. And then time remaining function. Awesome. Easy enough to set. You guys know about it. There's multiple alarms. Let's listen to the alarm sound first. I would rank it medium to low in noise. I would like it to be much, much louder than that, especially for a higher end Master G series. Uh, I only use one to two uh, alarms with these. You see, there's four. There's snooze, there's signal. Done with that. Love this function. And it kind of goes in line with the high end modules Casio does, kind of like the Pro Trek. So we're looking at after we've set our longitude, latitude, sunrise, and sunset. Okay, so that's on the date up there, and you can see it sets at 728. It came up at 712. Super cool. And like I said in that philosophy of use discussion, I mean, there's a lot of smart watches like that one back there and your phone that has this information. But, you know, these G-Shocks are kind of nice to have. All right, and then we go to something I don't use, and it's going to be the recording feature of the Casio Rangeman 9400. Altitude recording, bearing memory, memory records. They'll start on about E44 in the manual. Compass calibration, we'll talk about later, is E52. Bearing memory is E56, blah, blah, blah. All the crap I don't use. I don't use the recording function of either the Protrex or the Rangeman. I don't think anyone else does either. So it's going to have the two features in a non-smartwatch that I value most. Solar power, it does, and automatic time syncing to Fort Collins. We're seeing here the last sync of this particular watch. On the 15th of September, there's your time. There is a way to force uh, manual syncing, and that is you just press and hold the lower right button, and then you have an L1, L2, L3 indicating signal strength, and it'll start syncing. Usually you can do that. And this, it's here, talking about solar power, and I'll mention that again, you can kind of see the battery display here. So that's L medium and high so we're in high mode right there surprisingly this should have synced because today is the 19th it was in a drawer maybe that's why it didn't sync last night just so you know but I love atomic syncing and solar power and then we're back to the day and then I think we can change this display so there's your barometric pressure graph it is correct it's showing well actually it's starting to show a rise now but we do have a low pressure system coming in very soon back to the day. Now here's your set feature. I really debate even go through all this stuff. We're going to set our home city with this. I'm going to go super fast. Uh, 12 hour and then, oh you know what, I think I was wrong. It does have auto daylight saving time in in the home timekeeping, which you saw there it said auto. So my mistake, I was wrong on that. Seconds, hours, all that, data. There's your key function, light three seconds, power save. I showed you this, the PS. It, most of Casios, if not all, will have a power saving function, so you save your battery. And that's really good if you're a collector, because if you don't wear this watch, but every so often, it'll power the screen down. When it detects motion, it comes back on. 
units. So we press the corresponding button to change from inches of mercury uh, and feet and Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit's up here. I'm kind of pointing to the wrong one. And here's our city back again. And then we come back here. Oh, latitude, longitude. This is for your sunset, sunrise. Okay, cool. Now this one is a dedicated stopwatch. It's really strange they put this on the uh, range man to me, but whatever. Uh, so it has a, a shortcut to the stopwatch page. It also has a shortcut back going back to home time, which a lot of these upper end modules do. This is module 340, so I press and I hold. It'll take me back to the home screen. Kind of cool. So if you want stopwatch function right here, all your ABC functions will be accessed right here. Here's your barometer. I checked it today and it was accurate. I set it about a month ago and it's doing pretty good. So I think the local altimeter right now is 3008. Check your local airport. It has the temperature here and that's not been good at all. It's usually pretty off. About five to eight degrees off depending on how calibrated. Uh, I've talked about that before. I just don't know how accurate those temperature functions are and people will say all day long, well, keep it off your wrist. Let it sit for 30 minutes and check it. That's not practical. No one's going to do that. That's idiotic. I mean, so it's just not really useful. Uh, so if I need a temp, I'll just use another way to do it, or I'll just look at my phone, or use a smartwatch. A smartwatch, that's a pebble, by the way. Spoiler alert. Super awesome watch. Whoops, wrong button. Barrow, and then we go into altimeter. Like a lot of the altimeter functions, like on the Pro Checks, it's hit or miss. This one has actually been very good in calibration checks, both on motorcycle rides to the top of mountains and aircraft pressurization checks. It's been within about plus or minus 75 feet. And it is that exactly. The dial graph will show pressure differentials. You can read about that in the manual if you're interested. I'm uh, actually not very interested. So now this is our compass function. I have it set to, I believe, just magnetic direction. I didn't set it to true north. I usually think magnetic's just fine. And one of these buttons will actually change this to show the degree. That's what I was trying to do. So this lower right button, you can see it'll just repeat it. Oh, actually, that's probably bearing memory. My bad. Which again, I don't use. All I would ever use direction for is just a snap look to say, hey, I think this is like right now we're pointing, you know, southwest. I think that's southwest. And sure enough, it is. Uh, again, if it's not a function I use, I don't know. I don't know. And then we go back to Barrow. And that's pressure graph right there. One thing I love about the Range Man, and it's also on the Mudmaster series, is they do have mud gaskets on the very large and serrated buttons. So this is a serious watch. It could be used in professional circles like we talked about in Philosophy of Use. Uh, it's a durable watch. I do think, uh, actually I know that the shock functions, the mud functions, are pretty much not used by anybody. Uh, and I don't mean that the wrong way. I love G-Shocks, but if, dude, if your arm is sustaining, sustaining so much shock that your watch breaks, you probably ought to be more careful. You may be breaking a bone. I say this because I've been using Casio since 1982, and they weren't G-Shocks back then. They didn't have the big bezel protection back then, and I was smacking around. They never broke on me. They were fine. I mean, I dropped them. I hit them. Working as a construction worker, no problems whatsoever. By the way, I'm going to go back to home time right now. This is cool. It is a low temperature display. It goes down to 14 Fahrenheit. There are others in the Casio lineup that will go lower. But I do think it would make a really good outdoor watch for that. Uh, how about legibility, loom, and noise, which I'm starting to talk about. Uh, noise is how busy is the dial? Can I get needed information off of it quickly? And for that, I'm going to kind of bring in the ProTrek, and I forget which model this is, and it's not super important. It's just a super cool ProTrek in dark green camouflage with a negative display. Uh, I'll put it in the bottom if you want to buy it. I love the ProTreks. They're so cool. So there's a negative display for you right there. Check it. Okay, and I'm going to turn this light out so we can kind of see it just a little bit better. Okay, and what I was talking about is legibility. Now granted that's a negative display on the right and so it has negative display issues like I said earlier. But look at the digits. The digits, and I'm just keeping pressing the illumination button so you can see it better. I do have another light here. I wonder if that would show it. Nope, it's not plugged in. But these digits are a lot easier to see than that negative display notwithstanding. It's a very clean presentation. Oh, that helps on the ProTrek. So I can get 
date and if I press this I should be able to get day there it is I like the ProTrek display better as a bottom line it has lower noise now this is very typical of a lot of G-Shocks where it's going to be subdivided but the digits and the numerals are going to be smaller and also the face because it's a protective master of G-Series is going to be more recessed meaning it's going to be harder to see at an angle there you go so I would give noise probably about a medium not low but medium uh, the dial graph to me is a marginal use like I was saying I mean it's kind of a gee whiz decorative thing you know I don't know. Seeing this negative display, it's just kind of difficult to see as I turn it. Granted, my light's a little bit jacked up. How about durability, maintenance, accuracy, and what I call now bang factor? We'll start with that last one. I like it. That means, are you going to be banging it around, number one? And the answer is, yeah. It's kind of a chunky watch. It's not super thin. So you go bump into stuff. So I would say bang factor is high because it's chunky, stands out from the wrist. However, the other part of bang factor is will it be able to withstand and look good over the years as it does get bumped around? The Casio Rangeman G-Shock. Uh, I would say yeah. I think so. I mean, it has the recessed um, crystal on it, which is cool. Mineral, by the way. It's not sapphire at this price level. And so this bezel will get tore up a little bit, but if you don't like it, ooh, like I showed you earlier, wherever it went, you can replace it. Just go buy another bezel cover I guess so bang factors there accuracy is going to be excellent because it syncs automatically to Fort Collins how excellent is that I love that so not really an issue my two favorite issue two favorite features as far as 1c there's that term again are concerned is atomic and solar powered uh, durability is going to be high there's guys running Rangemans that have had them for many years and they absolutely rave about them. There's several of these reviews in Amazon if you want to look them up. Solar power is going to make it super low maintenance. Once it's fully charged up, you should do that in full sunlight for most effectiveness and shorter charge time. Seven months is what Casio will say. It does have what I call a load shedding feature like a lot of the Casio modules do that are solar powered that when it starts decreasing there's certain functions that won't be available until you charge the battery well i have had long-term solar powered casios before and probably about after eight ten years on a particular model the battery finally died and i had to replace it maybe i'll show that to you one of these days value mods and straps I already talked about the last two value is pretty high 185 bucks it is a purely digital watch however it offers a lot of value for what it does uh, abc it has a cool, kind of a tactical look to it, especially in this coloration. You can uh, maybe make a louder fashion statement by putting on the other skins if you like. Uh, totally worth it. Let me show you a couple competitive options super quick. This isn't one that you've been seeing in the periphery, upside down. And it is a Mudmaster. This is not a full-fledged Mudmaster, and it's not solar-powered. And it's not triple sensor either. This is a GG1000 1 Alpha 3. And I really like it because it's a little bit thinner than the, the regular Mudmaster, just slightly, I think. And it has uh, compass and temperature. So I think temp is right here, and then compass is right here. And that's it. But it doesn't have all the functionality of, of this one. However, it's a completely different look, a very cool look. So it has the dual presentation, analog and digital. I call those dualies. However, you'll have the hands occlude these the LCD screens once in a while. About the yellow highlights, the OD band and the black case. It's just a really cool technical watch. It's a, a super interesting competitive option because it shows it's kind of guys that are look are interested in this should be looking at that one. And maybe a full-fledged Mudmaster as well. But I think the Mudmaster full-fledged is, is even heavier than this one. This one is well same way. 3.4 ounces and this was 270. You can see all the information right there. This has a polymer keeper on it, not metal too, which is kind of surprising at that uh, price point. I want to show you another one and this is a, a Dually Pro Trek. This is model PRG280 2JF, 180 bucks, not solar powered, but it has that same type of look to it. What do you think? Not ABC though, so it's more of a basic module this one is. I sure like it though. It's just such a cool watch and I love the colorations on it. So this is not nearly as functional as that one. And 
that's it that's all i'm showing you i already showed you the pro truck right here so that's it tabletop review done it's highly recommended the downsides would be the smaller numerals for sure uh, it's not like totally inexpensive, but remember it's an ABC watch and it's tough. Probably would last uh, your lifetime if you take care of it. And it'll keep its value too. I think if you take care of it, you'll be able to sell it on eBay if and when you ever want to trade it out. Nothing.